Hi, this is Jen and thank you for joining me today. I am creating several cards using this beautiful Pick a Fence Studios butterfly stamp. It's called Swallowtail Beauty and it is a bigger stamp. It is bigger than a four and a quarter by five and a half um, card, um, just slightly. And so for this first card, I am using a piece of Strathmore 300 series watercolor paper. And um, because the butterfly is so big, I wanted to try and fit as much of the wing portion as I could onto my card panel. And so I'm going to modify the stamp just slightly to be able to do that. And so how I'm gonna do that is right now, I just masked off the body portion of the butterfly and I'm gonna take this Catherine Pooler as a, um, as a no line watercoloring ink pretty much and this one's called it's a boy uh, I actually should have lightened it up a little bit or not put so much ink um, but it works well with the colors that I chose usually I use antique linen for no line watercoloring um, sometimes that's hard for me to see and so I thought I'd go ahead and try and use a colored ink that's going to be the same as kind of like a base coat for um, my other colors that I'm going to be using. And so I went ahead and I masked that off and I actually forgot to take the masking paper off and luckily there was not enough ink on there to transfer onto the paper, but don't do that. Um, and so after I have the first wing masked off and stamped, I go ahead and just draw in, you know, really roughly a body of the butterfly. And then I'll go ahead and match that up through the stamp as close as I can to that body and then ink that up again or actually mask it off first. I'll mask off the body first and then I'll go ahead and ink that up again with the same ink. And this time I do remember to take the <laughs> masking off and then go ahead and um, push that down to get my impression. And um, I'm using the Strathmore 300 cold pressed watercolor paper, which has got a little bit of texture. It's a little bit rough. And so it's always a good idea if you're going to do some no line watercoloring or even stamping an image onto watercolor too, if you have some kind of stamping tool um, to go ahead and use that because it is sometimes a little more difficult to get um, a good impression the first time. So I'm taking a kneaded eraser to try and lighten up that um, body of the butterfly so that when I go ahead and color it, it's not going to show through my watercolor paint. Um, and it's a great eraser for watercolor paper because it lifts the pencil mark off of the paper without having to rub it um, as you would with the regular eraser, which will sometimes um, disturb the fibers of the paper. And then to start with my image, I'm just taking some water and some clean water and my brush. And I go over the entire image with the water and the clean brush first and just try and move some of that uh, pigment from the ink pad. And then after I have that completed, I'll go ahead and water it down again a little bit and then go in and get my watercolor. This watercolor is a combination of two different blue colors. I was trying to get more of a turquoise color and the palettes that I'm using on this image are both Prima and one of them is called Currents and it's got really pretty shades of blues and greens and then the other palette I'm using is called Complexion which has more of the skin tones and I'm using this color. It's called Chant. So it's kind of like a yellow, a brown color to highlight some different areas of the wings on the butterfly. Um, and a lot of the coloring I'm doing is uh, wet on wet and I am practicing still with my water control and how much water I use. This brush holds a lot of water and so I found that when I was using it I had to um, wipe off on my on my paper towel a little bit or tap it on my water jar. Um, but these brushes are from Michaels. I just picked them up and they're, I'm not going to say the name because I can't. I just know they're, <laughs> they're Zen and then the brand name is in the description because I can't say it. And the size I'm using for most of this is a size 8 
And then for some of the lines and finer details, this brush right here, I am using a number two. Um, and that can vary across different brands, um, especially if you have brushes that are just watercolor brushes compared to brushes that are, um, that say that they're for watercolor and oils and acrylics as well. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do the background with a wash of the color that's coconut in this palette, the complexion palette. Um, but as I'm learning about watercolor, one of the things I've learned is that to buy brushes that are specifically for watercolor. I do have ones that I use that aren't that I have bought from Amazon that are for um, they say they're for watercolor or acrylics or oils or you know different mediums but i still use them um, because i like them and they <laughs> work well for me for what i'm doing um, but that's one of the things i have learned is that if you're going to buy brushes to buy ones that are specifically made for watercolor um, and there's a lot of good videos out there for um, the different types of brushes and um, what they're used for um, as far as like the shapes and things like that. Um, so I'm taking the number two brush and just drawing the lines for the butterfly wings. Um, if you can see on the left hand side, I thought that was a space between the, the wings. Um, and then the more I looked at it, the more I was like, no, that's not right. I do end up covering that up as best as I can to try and fix that because it is not actually a gap between the wings like there is on the right side. Um, it is just, that's how the stamp is. And um, so um, it's actually a part of the wing and not a gap. So like I said, I do go back and fix it. It does look quite odd, but. Um, and then after I'm finished doing my, the painting of the wings, I go ahead and splatter some, um, and I cannot remember what color that is, I apologize. Uh, I go ahead and uh, use the watercolor to do some splatter. And then I'm taking one of the darker blues in the current set and using that to do the body of the butterfly. And then I'm gonna go ahead and use that smaller brush again to you do the antenna on the butterfly. And I was really happy with the first antenna and then the second one, I don't know what happened. My, <laughs> my hand went off to the side a little too soon. So one of them is shorter, but nature is not perfect. Even though I think butterflies are probably as one of the most perfect things in nature. Um, I was okay with it not being so perfect. Um, after that, I went ahead and took some white gouache and watered it down and did some white splatters with that. And that will finish off this card. I'll have the completed card at the end. I don't actually show the assembly of the cards because it's really, really simple for these three. Um, and so I'm going to go ahead and move on to the next card. I'm taking the stamp again. I've repositioned it so it's not in the same exact position. And then I am using a Tombow marker and it's number 195. It's a really pretty green color. And I'm just um, kind of scribbling all over the stamp. And then after I have my color down on the stamp, I go ahead and spritz it a few times with my water bottle. And then press that as hard as I can onto my watercolor paper. And this is the Strathmore 300 paper again. And then I think it leaves a really good impression or at least a, you know, a good impression for me to go ahead and um, kind of blend that color out. So that's what I'm going to do first is I just take my water, um, some clean water and my brush and blend out all those marker colors so that the lines are not as splotchy. And since Tombow's are a dye marker, um, they're water based, they are very easy to watercolor with. So I'm just going to continue to take the marker over different areas of the image and I'm just going in the areas where there already is color. So I'm not going inside of the white space. Um, I do end up filling that in later, but uh, for this first part, I'm just going to go in and try and add a little more um, deepness to the color. And then after that, I started with my micron, my black micron marker or pen 
and uh, decided to go ahead and go use a Sharpie just because the tip of the Sharpie is a little bit thicker and so I can get more coverage without using um, so much um, ink. And so I've got a fine tip Sharpie and I'm just going over a lot of the lines that I've already, that I've watercolored over, um, mainly because I was not sure exactly where I was gonna put the black color. I just knew that I wanted to put it. Um, I wanted to do a green butterfly and then I did, wasn't sure if there was even green butterflies out there. And there are swallowtail butterflies that are green. Um, they're called emerald, uh, swallowtail emerald, or sometimes I think they call them peacock um, butterflies. Um, but they're super pretty and so I was trying to kind of go after that and they do have a lot of black in them. And so I went ahead and I traced out all the areas in black and put some dots in black. And then I go back in with several of my green Tombow marker to fill in the rest of that white space. And I'm just using two different color green markers. Um, I'm trying to go darker towards the center of the butterfly or towards the body and then a little bit lighter on the outside. Um, and that will complete that. I do some black uh, splatter in gouache and I'll have the final card at the end of the video. And so for the last card, I have just taken the stamp and used my Versamark embossing ink and I am now covering that with white embossing powder and I'll go ahead and heat that up. And then I'm also going to take the stamp and move it towards the top of the card panel and use it there as well. So there'll, there'll be part of the butterfly image on the bottom and part on the top. And I will go ahead and again use my Versamark embossing ink and white embossing powder. And I had to pull out my Tim Holtz uh, stamping platform for this because I didn't have any bigger platform that would hold my paper and the stamp in the position that I wanted it on my card panel. And so um, that one is a little bit bigger. And so I went ahead and grabbed that. And once I have those images embossed, I'm gonna take my pixie powders and I am using, this is candy pink, I believe. And then the other color is an auburn it's called Aubergine, Aubergine Dream. And for these powders, it just has a container with a really small tip and you just kind of squeeze and tap and that powder will come out. So I've put that in uh, different areas around my butterfly image. And I have a palette that I've just sprayed some clean water in and I'm just dipping my brush in that water and bringing it to the stamped image and the powder to go ahead and distribute that powder out. I love powders. They're one of my very favorite things to use. Um, most of them will give you this great variation in color or bursts of color. And there's just so many different ways that you can use them. Um, I have never thought to use them like this. I saw somebody, I believe it was on the Save the Crafty YouTuber Hop, that had taken the, um, I think it was some Nouveau Shimmer Powder and had gone and put it in a stamped image. And for some reason, I just never thought to use it like that. I always just kind of plop the powder down and spray it with the bottle and watch it do its work. Um, but I really like doing this and um, I love this color in particular. This is Aubergine, Aubergine Dream. It's kind of like a purple, um, a pink mixture. And once I'm done distributing the color over the both of the um, uh, butterflies, I just go ahead and splatter it with some of the leftover paint. And then I take a dry um, a paper towel and just go over that white embossed image to uh, remove some of the um, ink that had gotten on the embossed portion. Um, and these are the completed cards. This is the first card. Um, as you can see on that left hand side, I tried to cover that area up where I messed up. It looks kind of funny. Um, and I guess I could have put the sentiment there, but I didn't want a sentiment on the outside. So I just went ahead and put a Happy Mother's Day sentiment on the inside of the card along with another little butterfly. For the second card, I use the sentiment, it will get better, and I've just stamped that up in some black Versafine ink and then added some black enamel dots and some green flat sequins. And then the last card, I just stamped up the sentiment of thank you in a black Versafine and added some clear um, sequins to that card, and that will complete that card. Um, I think the cards look, 
uh, very different for each of them, um, which is great. It's a great way to kind of stretch your supplies and get more out of them. And so um, that is it for me. If you like this video or found it informative, please go ahead and give me a thumbs up. Um, I want to thank everybody that's new to my channel um, and also to my all the subscribers that have been with me. I really do appreciate um, your viewership and your comments. Uh, they mean a lot to me. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you stay safe. Enjoy your day. And if you are still here listening to the video, watching the video, thank you. I know not everyone stays till the end, which is totally fine. Um, but for those that have stayed till the end of this video, I wanted to go ahead and give you the chance to win a prize. Um, that prize is going to be some Distress Crayons by Tim Holtz. Um, these are water reactive crayons. The set that I have is a primary color set. So there are six of them. And this is brand new, unopened, unused. Um, you can either have that um, in the, if you're in the US, um, that will be your prize. If you're international, I will go ahead and give you a $10 gift certificate to a vendor of your choice. It just has to be electronic so that I'm not incurring any mailing costs. So that will be your choice um, if you are an international and you are the winner. Um, all details will be in the Google Doc link below. That's how you will you will enter the giveaway and that's how I will do um, my giveaways from this point forward just because it's a lot easier to contact the winners. So um, if you want to go ahead and participate in that, go ahead and click on the link in the description below. Um, and again, thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you next time.